Hey there, welcome to Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, as you can tell, we're not doing our normal live streaming today. That uh, didn't quite work out, but I am re-recording the message. This is the 4th of October, and this is the ninth part of the power of a blessing. And so let's go ahead and just uh, jump into it. The first sermon point, and you can download the sermon points from our website, is this. Wis- wisdom is a brilliant teacher. Wisdom means having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. It means to be prudent and to have insight. Wisdom is the right application of information, or wisdom is the right use of knowledge. A person can have all kinds of data and information, but if they don't apply it correctly, they are unwise. An example might be gossipers. Gossipers have information, And they use it unwisely because when they use it, it hurts other people. Or you can go on to the internet and you can see all kinds of videos from dash cams of people who know how to drive, but yet they have an instance of road rage and they end up causing an accident. Well, they have the information, they know how to drive, but they are using that information unwisely, that is in a road rage situation, and so they're unwise. I remember reading a story of a family that went on vacation and they hired a house sitter and only to come back from their vacation to find out that their house sitter had actually been renting out their house on Airbnb. And so that would be an unwise use of their information. And so what we really need in our day is we need discernment. We need wisdom. In fact, every era has needed discernment. And especially at uh, the a time of inflection in, in history, you really need wisdom and discernment. And that's one thing that we need in our day is wisdom, discernment. Because without it, we're not going to have justice. And so let's take a look at Solomon as he entered his reign. He called out, he cried out, in other words, to God for wisdom. 1 Kings 3, 5-14 through 14 says this, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask, what should I give you? And Solomon replied, You should have great and faithful love to your servant. You have shown great and faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness, and integrity. You have continued this great and faithful love for him by giving him a son to sit on his throne, as it is today. Lord my God, you have now made your servant king in my father David's place, yet I am just a youth with no experience in leadership. Your servant is among your people you have chosen, a people too numerous to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an obedient heart to judge your people and to discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Now it pleased the Lord that Solomon had requested this, so God said to him, Because you have requested this and did not ask for long life or riches for yourself or the death of your enemies, but you asked discernment for yourself to understand justice, I will therefore do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has never been anyone like you before and never will be again. In addition, I will give you what you did not ask for, both riches and honor, so that no man in any kingdom will be your equal during your entire life. It's pretty awesome. If you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and commands just as your father David did, I will give you a long life. That was one of Solomon's finest moments. He could have asked for play, pay, and way, that is for pleasure, for riches, and for everything to go his way whatever he wanted. Instead, he asked for wisdom. Wisdom is a great teacher, which is what Solomon needed as a new king. It's what everyone needs in all times. Proverbs 4, 10 through 13 says this, Listen, my son, accept my words, and you will live many years. I am teaching you the way of wisdom. I am guiding you on straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not be stumbled. Hold on to instruction. Don't let go. Guard it, for it is your life. There are many benefits of applying wisdom's instruction in our life. Psalm 37, 1-8 says this, Do not be agitated by evildoers. Do not envy those who do wrong. 
See that Psalm 37, 1 through 8 says, Do not be agitated by evildoers. Do not envy those who do wrong. For they wither quickly like grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like noonday. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Do not be agitated by one who prospers in his way, by the man who carries out evil plans. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It can only bring harm. And that leads to the second sermon point this morning. Wisdom multiplies goodness. You see, wisdom produces integrity. and Integrity rewards the wise abundantly. Proverbs 2.21 says, For the upright will inhabit the land, and those of integrity will remain in it. Godly wisdom is part of the renewal of our mind as we increasingly reflect Christ in our lives. Colossians 3, 5-10 says, Therefore put to death what belongs to your worldly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath comes on the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now you must also put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. The battlefield really does extend from our heart to our mind. And you can think about all the battlefield maps that have ever been drawn, and you can see where the the armies are arrayed on the battlefield. And it's interesting to see how they position themselves. But I can tell you this, friend, in this spiritual battle, the battlefield is about 18 inches long. It is from the heart to the mind. And it truly is a battle. And it was a battle in Solomon's time as well. It has been a battle for time immemorial. 1 Kings 3, 16 through 28 says this, Then two women were prostitutes, came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, Please, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I had a baby while she was in the house. On the third day after I gave birth, she also had a baby and we were alone. No one else was with us in the house. Just the two of us were there. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your servant was asleep. She laid him at her breast and she put her dead son in my arms. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, I discovered he was dead. That morning, when I looked closely at him, I realized that he was not the son I gave birth to. No, the other woman said, my son is the living one. Your son is the dead one. The first woman said, no, your son is the dead one. My son is the living one. So they argued before the king what to do. What should Solomon do? He needs wisdom. And the battle is that 18-inch battlefield from the heart and the mind. And he's got to discern in front of all of his people. What should he do? The king replied, This woman says, this is my son who is alive, and your son is dead. But that woman says, no, your son is dead, and my son is alive. The king continued, bring me a sword. So they brought the sword to the king. Solomon said, cut the living boy in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive spoke to the king because she felt great compassion for her son. My Lord, give her the living baby, she said, but please don't have him killed. But the other one said, He will not be mine or yours. Cut him in two. Verse 27, here's where you see this beautiful wisdom of Solomon. The king responded, give the living baby to the first woman and don't kill him. She is his mother. You see, all Israel heard about the judgment the king had given, and they stood in awe of the king because they saw that God's wisdom was in him to carry out justice. Friend, without wisdom, we're not going to have justice. Justice is not the advantage of the stronger. Let me say that again. This is so important. Justice is not the advantage of the stronger. Might does not make right. Justice flows from wisdom, from godly wisdom. And if we're living in a day where people aren't wise, we're going to lose justice in our society. Wisdom leads to justice. Just like in that moment, he could discern who the real mother was, by pulling out the sword because the real mother would say, no, we want him to live. And though uh, the other one said, no, kill him, Solomon could tell, you're not his mother because the real mother would want him to live. 
Y'all, that's justice. That leads to the third point. The wicked and the wise are like oil and water. They are as different as night and day. Psalm 37, 9 through 29 says this, For evildoers will be destroyed, but those who put their hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked person will be no more. If you look for him, he will not be there. But the humble will inherit the land and will enjoy abundant prosperity. The wicked person schemes against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. The Lord laughs at him because he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and strung the bow to bring down the afflicted and needy and to slaughter those whose way is upright. The swords will enter their own hearts and their bows will be broken. The little that the righteous man has is better than the abundance of many wicked people. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. Y'all, that's a great place to say amen, isn't it? You see, the Lord watches over the blameless all their days and their inheritance will last forever. And that leads to the fourth point this morning. The wise long for the Lord. The wise long for the Lord. To long is to yearn earnestly for something. You see, the appetite of fools is never satisfied despite their abundance. But the wise are content in the Lord even in the midst of calamity. And why is that? It's because the wise know that the riches of the worldly are fleeting and the misery of the godly is temporary. Those in the Lord we know, even if we're suffering, it is but temporary. Because one day we'll be in eternity with the Lord. Psalm 37, 30 through 40 says this, The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom. His tongue speaks what is just. The instruction of his God is in his heart. His steps do not falter. The wicked one lies in wait for the righteous and seeks to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in the power of the wicked, one, or allow him to be condemned when he is judged. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will watch when the wicked are destroyed. I have seen a wicked, violent man, well-rooted like a flourishing native tree. Then I passed by and noticed he was gone. I searched for him, but he could not be found. Watch the blameless and observe the upright, for the man of peace will have a future. But transgressors will all be eliminated. The future of the wicked will be destroyed. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Their refuge in a time of distress. The Lord helps and delivers them. He will deliver them from the wicked and will save them because they take refuge in Him. Y'all, wisdom saves the day because godly wisdom always turns to the Lord. It's always focused on Christ. It's always focused on His righteousness, His holiness. Psalm 42, 1 through 5 and 8 through 11 says this, As a deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, God. I thirst for God, the living God. When, he, when can I come and appear before God? My tears have been in my, my food day and night, while all day long people say to me, where is your God? I remember this as I pour out my heart, how I walked with many, leading the festive procession to the house of God with joyful and thankful shouts. Why am I so depressed? Why this turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, for I will still praise Him, my Savior and my God. And then verses 8 and following. The Lord will send His faithful love by day. His song will be with me in the night. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about in sorrow because of the enemy's uh, oppression? My adversaries taunt me as if crushing my bones. While all day long they say to me, where is your God? Why am I so depressed? Why this turmoil within me? But watch this. Put your hope in God, for I will still praise Him, my Savior and my God. Amen. See, hope and praise, they are the realm of the righteous. They belong to the wise. Fools put their confidence in anything and everything other than God, but the wise put their faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. See, Is life about our play, pay, and way? That is, about our pleasure, about our riches, and about getting whatever we want? No, not in the least. It's about God's way, His word, and His praise. That's right, y'all. Life is about God's word, His ways, and His praise. He alone is worthy of trust and worship. If you trust in the Lord, you worship Him, you follow Him, You are indeed wise beyond your years. I pray you do follow the Lord each and every day and that you pursue wisdom and in so doing, you see justice. God bless you all. 
We'll see you next Sunday. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you for each person that's watching. Lord, we ask indeed that we would pursue wisdom, and in so doing, we would be a nation of justice. For without justice and without wisdom, life is short, nasty, and very, very tough. But with wisdom and justice, the people rejoice. Lord, let us be a nation that's wise so that we pursue justice and let people live in peace. Bless us as we go. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you next Sunday. Uh, feel free to watch the other video devotionals, Christforlife.life, and check in with the Trinity website, trinitycg.org. And throughout the week, because we're putting sermon notes and other things, other content on the site. God bless you all. We'll see you soon.